August 16, 2009. Usain Bolt is preparing to compete in the 100 meter dash at the track and field world championship finals in Berlin. Bolt cruised through the preliminary heats, easily reaching the finals and giving himself the chance to compete for another world title. The world watched as Bolt and the other runners lined up and assumed their stances. Let's rewind. Bolt became a household name thanks to his performance at the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing. Already the world record holder for the 100 meter dash, Bolt was the favorite to bring the gold medal back to Jamaica, but by breaking his own record in the process, he became a global sensation. His official time was a 9.69. Following the 2008 Olympics, competition among the world's top sprinters heated up. Bolt's teammate, fellow Jamaican Asafa Powell, had improved his best time to a 9.72, only three hundredths of a second behind Bolt's world record. Tyson Gay, one of Bolt's primary rivals, set a wind-assisted best of 9.68, but because it was run during Olympic trials, it didn't qualify for record status. Regardless, Bolt had his work cut out for him. In Berlin, when the runners took their positions, they were trying to stake their claims as the fastest man alive. The human obsession with speed invaded video games a long time ago. The first racing game was the Atari Space Race, released in 1973, in which players raced spaceships across the screen. 1982 saw the release of one of the most influential video games of all time, Pole Position. The 90s saw the inception of many racing game franchises that we love today, including Mario Kart, Gran Turismo, and Need for Speed. Racing games don't have a monopoly on going fast, though. Speedrunners in nearly every game have set and raised the bar for how quickly games can be played. Through meticulous planning and precise execution, runners are able to set and break world records, pushing games to their limits. They don't stop playing the game the way that it was intended. They're willing to glitch and break games beyond recognition if it saves them even a fraction of a second. Some runners, called tasters, use a variety of tools to augment their own skills, finding theoretically perfect runs just to prove what can be accomplished. For whatever reason, humans love going fast. Neon White is an almost impossibly fast game. You play as White, a sinner plucked from hell to compete for a chance to live in heaven. The competitors, known as Neons, are tasked with slaying demons. Only the most effective Neons will get to see the pearly gates, and you want to be one of them. If you want to be the top Neon, you'll have to be the fastest. The story is divided into missions, each of which take place in their own celestial region. An idyllic port an old city, an abandoned temple. Each location is infested with demons that must be eradicated. You visit them, one by one, day by day, cleansing the purgatory-like world. Missions are further broken down into levels, atomic units of gameplay through which the player expresses mastery by finishing as fast as they can. Though the levels in each mission share a common visual style, every level presents its own unique gameplay. Players fly through the levels at breakneck speeds, destroying every demon that stands in their way. Though you start each level with a katana, your sword isn't the only weapon available to you on your hunt for demons. You can expand your arsenal by collecting firearms in the form of soul cards, pistols, SMGs, and assault rifles. Bigger enemies take bigger hits, so the game lets you respond with bigger weapons. While these weapon cards do improve your ability to slay demons, their real value lies in how they can be used to improve your mobility. By discarding a weapon, the player can utilize the weapon's card ability, all of which provide a temporary boost to your traversal skills. The shotgun lets you explode forward, the repeater rifle grants unparalleled lateral speed, and the rocket launcher deploys a grappling hook. You want to go fast, and your weapons are the means through which to do so. The finish line of every level is a prism that doesn't become accessible until every demon in the level has been destroyed. If you miss even one demon, the prism remains locked, and you'll almost certainly have to restart the level. Even if you do destroy all of the demons and reach the ending point, 
you may still be confronted with the fact that reaching the finish line isn't good enough for this game. Every level has a set of medals, with medals being awarded based on your best time. Advancing the story requires a certain number of gold and ace medals. You can complete any level at any pace you want, there's nothing forcing you to speed up, but if you don't go fast enough, you don't move on. Repeatedly completing any level unlocks access to tools for that level to improve your time. The first is the global leaderboard, letting you know where you rank among all neons to have played the game. The next, a ghost, is familiar to all racing fans. Your ghost shows you your best run on any level, letting you compare further runs against your best time. The last tool to be unlocked is the shortcut indicator, a floating hand emblem that shows you a part of the route that you probably missed. If you manage to minimize mistakes, you can post a good time, and if you take the intended shortcut, you can post an even better one, but that isn't good enough in neon white. Every level has a secret medal to be unlocked, the dev medal, awarded to those that beat the times of the game's creator. Obviously, following the game's prescribed route, even if you utilize shortcuts, isn't enough to unlock dev medals. To beat those times, you have to learn to see everything at once as you move through the levels, and to develop an intimacy with how your soul cards interact and define what is and isn't out of reach. And even if you do manage to earn a dev medal, that's still not going to be enough to get you a respectable position on the game's leaderboard. There are two rules to Neon White. You have to go fast, and you have to go faster. When I originally recorded this next section, I erroneously assumed that everyone I referred to uses he, him pronouns because I am a sexist idiot. I'll indicate on screen whenever I use an inaccurate pronoun, and I'll try to be better about this mistake in the future. The speedrunning community surrounding Neon White has flourished. The game's demo alone has 143 submissions on speedrun.com, with the top time posted by a runner named Ideal. His time, a blisteringly fast 5 minutes 16 seconds, showed what the game could be before it even launched. The original record for the game was also posted by Adil, a 60 minute 44 second sprint through the game. While it didn't keep pace with his demo run, the time was impressive. He managed to extend his performance from only a handful of levels to nearly 100. Demon Spud was the next runner to set the record. Very little is known about this run. Its existence is only known about because it showed up at the top of the leaderboard, but he was the first runner to break one hour. Not one to be outdone, Idil responded with a 52.35. The next day, the record was taken by a runner named Crash. Crash was a dedicated community member, creating the auto splitter tool used by the community to record level times, so it wasn't a surprise to see him post a 50 minute 8 second run. Still obsessed with the top position, Idil broke the record again that day with a 47.22. A day later, the record was taken by a new runner, Tacky Tactics. Despite setting the record with a time of 46.40, Tech Tactics was dismayed with his ending. He felt that the run should have been a low 45. It was Crash who struck back this time with a 45.43, but Tacky Tactics didn't let that stand for long. He unleashed an onslaught of records, incrementally lowering his time. As the record crept toward 40 minutes, a runner named Azore threw his hat into the ring, trading places with Tacky Tactics at the top of the leaderboard. Their back and forth ended with an Azori run of 34-44 on top. The runner who eventually broke up the time trading was Humps, who took the top leaderboard position with a time of 34-43. Humps had previously flirted with the top of the leaderboard, but this was his first time at number one. Azori reclaimed the title with a 34-09 the next day, and the title was once again caught between two runners. Humps posted a 33-37 on July 17, 2022, 
a 33.27 on the 19th, and a 33.21 on the 22nd. Azori posted a 33.12, and Humps punched back with a 32.47. About a week before Humps' 32.47, a runner named Bladen posted a 33.30 run. This run was notable because, despite not being a record itself, Bladen was a then nameless runner who came out of nowhere to push the top players. It came as no surprise when, a couple of weeks after his emergence, Bladen ascended to first place, posting a 31 minute 59 second blitz. The record exchange began again, Humps with a 31.49, Bladen with a 31.41, Humps with a 31.34, and Bladen with a 31.24. As of this video, this is where the record currently stands. Jet Set Radio Future was a game that defined my childhood. Set in a futuristic, dystopian Tokyo, the game follows a group of inline skaters the GGs, as they challenge other skater gangs for control of the city. Utilizing skate and graffiti skills, the player helps the GGs take over Tokyo, evade other gangs, and save the city from destruction. The gameplay is smooth, the art style is incredible, and you just feel cool playing it. A big reason for that is the soundtrack. Jet Set Radio Future's soundtrack was largely written by Richard Jacques an S-tier Twitter shitposter Hideki Naganuma. It won Outstanding Original Musical Score from the National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers and Best Music Among Xbox Games from IGN. The hypnotic digital hip-hop score elevated an already excellent game to a level that very few reach. According to Matt Stevenson, creator of Machine Girl, the digital hardcore duo that made Neon White soundtrack, the game's music was heavily inspired by the music in Jet Set Radio Future. That shouldn't surprise anyone. Any song from either game would sound perfectly at home in the other. These are excellent soundtracks, two of the best in gaming, and they make their respective games better. Neon White was the brainchild of Ben Esposito. Esposito had previously made a name for himself in the indie space with his 2018 game Donut County. With cute graphics and relaxing gameplay, Donut County had something for everyone. Neon White is everything that Donut County isn't. According to Esposito, Neon White is a game for freaks. Not just speed freaks, but anime freaks. The kind that would get home from middle school to watch Toonami. It leans heavily into all of the tropes of the genre, and it's cringe, but it's a really, really good cringe. Like an inside joke between you and the game. The influence is obvious in the character design and dialogue, and even more so during the opening cinematic. If you aren't a freak when you start playing, Neon White will turn you into one. What drives our need for speed? What compelled Andy Green to set the land speed world record, 763 miles per hour? in a jet-powered car? Why does Formula One generate billions of dollars in revenue every year? What is it about going fast that humans find so alluring? With the world looking on, Usain Bolt and the other runners lined up and prepared to run. There's the start, and Bolt got a good one, and Gay's right with him, and so's Asafa Powell. Bailey's there too, but here's Bolt. Bolt charging to the front. Gay's coming, but can't catch him. Usain Bolt! Look at the time, 958 world record. 